There's no replacement for displacement. I always hated that term because it's an oversimplification. Uh, it discounts all of the other elements that make for an engine's performance. You know, the breathing, you know, just overall efficiency, geometry, so many factors make for a performance engine. But for some reason in our minds, it all comes down to displacement. Now, I first started to realize that things weren't quite, you know, that easy, that simple. Back in the 80s, when the, when the IHRA started allowing mountain motor unlimited cubic inch pro stock cars. And back then, they were out, they were out in the 800 cubic inch range, but still a legal 500 inch NHRA car could sneak in to a field, go around, and even, I, I think there was actually one or two races that were won by legal NHRA cars. How do you square that, that 300 cubic inch difference, you know, with pretty much the same performance? Even today, you've got, uh, like, here's a current example, this Big Chief from Street Outlaws. So he's out there with a 481 cubic inch Butler Pontiac motor. And that car is able to go toe to toe with cars with engines that are almost twice the cubic inches. How does this work? It, well, it's because the, what we think of as cubic inch is really a myth. Right? Cubic inch is, is the size, it's the displacement of the engine as a pump. It's the swept area of the piston in the bore, right? You know, times the number of cylinders gives you your cubic inches. What we, take, what we don't take into account when we measure cubic inches is how much of that swept area is actually being used to produce work. You know, as a pump, it's just going in and out. But as a working device, the pressure pulse starts here and it diminishes as the piston goes further down. As the piston accelerates away from top dead center, the pressure pulse has less and less effect on what's going on. By that measure, okay, so let's use a, 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 a simple engine, a Ford 302, uh, because it's just a, a, a four inch bore and a three inch stroke. If you go by that measure of the piston only producing work for the top half of the bore, we're going, to, we're going to call it quits at 90 degrees, you know, um, and that's being really generous. Most normally aspirated engines will use up by about 45 or 50 degrees past top dead center. At that point, the piston is really long for, for the ride, and then you get into the exhaust valve opening point, so the party is over by 90 degrees. So, by that measure, is an internal combustion engine, that 300 cubic inch engine is only using half of its, of its displacement to produce work. So that, that's 150 cubic inches. But now here's where things start to get a little crazy. The displacement is measured as the engine is sitting static. But we're talking about a four cycle engine, which means that it has to rotate twice for all eight cylinders to make power. So your actual working displacement of that 302 on any given rotation is only about 75 cubic inches. So now let's say we want to make this engine bigger, okay? And let's say that our 302 started out at zero deck, and we're going to add a four inch stroke crank to it, right? So we're going to add 100, 100 cubic inches, more or less. Let's, let's just talk in round numbers now. We're going to go from 300 to 400 cubic inches. Now, in order to maintain that same zero deck, you've got to raise the, pit, the pin in the piston half of an inch to accommodate the stroke. So now what has happened? You added a full inch of swept area to the piston. You increased the engine's displacement by 100 cubic inches, but you didn't increase the working area at all. Because you raised the pin, that extra swept area is at the bottom of the bore, not the top. So you've got that same 75 cubic inches doing the same amount of work at 400 cubic inches that you had at 300 cubic inches. Right? You got to think about this. You got to take a few minutes to let this, you know, wrap it around your head. So, the benefits of a stroker. Yes, you increase the swept area by an inch, which means that the engine can draw more mixture in. You've also increased its static and its dynamic compression ratios by adding the swept area to it. And also, you've given the crank, or you've given the rod, more leverage against the crank because angularity is leverage, leverage is torque. So you've increased torque. But you didn't actually increase the amount of working space, working area of the engine, right? Think about that. So anyway, I figured I'd just throw that at you. 
lay in bed and think about it all night tonight. See you tomorrow.